How can you get paid to write? And what methods work today for writers who want to earn a living from their creative work? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today show. Hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this or about the craft of writing, please subscribe to the channel. I always wanted to earn a living from the written word and from creative work. So I studied journalism back in the early 2000s. I spent more time going out and going to parties than learning how to find meaningful work. And to my great surprise, but no one else's, I was unemployed for uh, on and off for a year or two after graduating. Back then, I thought it was all but impossible for anybody to earn a living from the written word. It didn't help that we were in a, the middle of a difficult recession at the time. And I even spent some time on social welfare. I all but gave up on trying to earn a living from writing. But over the course of a couple of years, I eventually discovered how writers earn a living today. I've got 14 different methods which you can use. Not all of these will be applicable to whatever you're writing, but I encourage you to experiment with one or two and see which works best for your type of creative work. Number one, join a partner program. If you're writing nonfiction, if you want to start writing nonfiction articles, and you don't quite have an audience yet, I'd encourage you to join a partner program on the likes of Medium or Quora. If you write articles or answers that people find helpful, that people engage with, you can start earning a couple of dollars once you build up a small following. I was in the, joined the Medium Partner Program several years ago. Some months I've earned a couple of hundred dollars from it. Some months I haven't earned much. And I know some Medium Partner Program members who've earned five figures a month. That's right, five figures a month from the Partner Program. But earnings can fluctuate a lot. That said, if you're writing nonfiction, you don't have an existing audience, and you're still trying to find your voice online, it's a great place to start. It can be a bit of a grind and the algorithm does change, but there's a pre-built audience of readers who are waiting to hear from you. So I'd encourage you to apply for the Medium Partner Program today. The next option that you can use to get paid to write is become a freelance writer. Now I worked as a freelance writer uh, on and off over the years. I've freelanced for uh, newspapers in Ireland as a technology journalist. And I've also freelanced more recently for publications like Forbes. Freelance writing is a tough gig because you got to spend some of the day working on your commissions. But if you spend all of the day working on your latest commissions, then you may run out of commissions at the end of the month because you haven't spent time pitching clients. And that happened to me several times during my career as a freelance journalist. So what I'd encourage you to do is spend the morning or the early part of the day working on the actual jobs that you have and spend the latter part of the day pitching clients. So when the end of the month comes around, you don't suddenly find yourself short on money or you don't have a writing gig lined up. And that's something that's happened to me. But freelance writing can be lucrative if you get into a specific niche. The third strategy or method that you can use to get paid to write is one that fiction writers use all the time, and that's to enter writing competitions. Some writing competitions will give prize money that can be a couple of hundred dollars or even a couple of thousand dollars, or they can even publish your work and promote, help you promote it. Now, if you're wondering where to find writing competitions to enter, I'd encourage you to use a website like Duotrope, duotrope.com, D-U-O-T-R-O-P-E, or you can use submittable.com, and they will help you find the latest writing competitions and manage your applications to them. That I've entered a few writing competitions over the years. I was shortlisted for one or two, but I never really won much money with this method. That said, if you're a good uh, literary writer, if you really enjoy writing fiction and you want to give yourself some deadlines and get into the habit of submitting your work and potentially earning a little bit on the side, writing competitions could be for you. The fourth method you can try is to start a blog. You won't earn money from blogging directly, at least at first, but starting a blog gives you a part of the internet that you can call your own and it supports all of the subsequent methods for getting paid to write that I'm going to go through. Starting a blog is also great because it can serve as a type of online portfolio which can help you with freelance writing which can help you land a book contract or a book deal and which can also help you land clients starting a blog is relatively easy all you need is a wordpress website potentially an email list to promote your latest articles and then a way of getting traffic to your blog and for that you can use search engine optimization or you can build an audience on social media or medium and ask them to visit your site and start reading some of your articles there. But it is a long-term thing, so don't expect to start earning money from your blog straight away. It could take, you know, a year or two, and it certainly took me, I think, two years before I started earning money from some of the strategies that I'm about to cover. The fifth way you can get paid to write is through affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is basically the promotion of products and services that you use and trust. I stumbled into affiliate marketing accidentally. When I started my blog, I took a course in 
or on lynda.com all about Photoshop because I wanted to learn how to desi design images for my blog rather than relying on designers. I just didn't have a lot of money to work with designers at the time. I took the course at lynda.com which is now known as LinkedIn Learning and I wrote a 1,500 word article all about my impressions uh, from using the online courses. To my great surprise, a couple of months later when I was in work, one of the guys I was working with said, Brian, I was thinking of taking a course on lynda.com. I typed in, is lynda.com worth it? And your review came up and I didn't know my review was ranking in Google at all. A few days later, I got an email from the lynda.com affiliate marketing rep who said if I put some affiliate links with a disclaimer into the review, I could earn a commission if somebody bought a lynda.com subscription based on my review. So I did the, just that with the disclaimer, set up my PayPal account, and I think two months later, I received money over PayPal, which I used to buy myself some new tires for my old car. So I'm not saying you need to start writing up uh, reviews of courses you take, but consider what products and services you use and trust, and perhaps you could create some content about them or recommend them to your audience. The sixth strategy that you can use is one, if you have a blog or a content website that's beginning to get traffic, you can monetize with a display advertising like Google AdSense, or you can apply for an advertising network like Mediavine or AdDrive if you've got more traffic. This is currently the strategy that I use the most to monetize written works that I write and also written works by other freelance writers. I like monetizing with ads because it's relatively stable. It's less competitive than affiliate marketing. And it's also something that you can do relatively easy and still focus on publishing written content for your sites. That said, you do need a website with traffic. So if you set up a website today, don't expect to start monetizing with ads tomorrow. And even then it can take a year or two before you start earning a significant amount of money from advertising. That said, the, is, there is no cap on how much you can earn from advertising and some content publishers who have hired a team of writers earn six figures a month. That's right, a month. Uh, from monetizing with ads. So if you're serious about content publishing, that might be a strategy that you could pursue. The seventh strategy that you can use to get paid to write is to consider buying and flipping websites. If you're a writer, you're talented with the written word. Writing can seem like a mysterious dark art to people who don't write. So if you're able to produce content quite quickly, chances are you can build out a content website on a specific niche or a topic, and then you could potentially sell that website because the content in it is valuable or is already attracting traffic. Websites typically sell for a by 32 to by 47 multiple of monthly profits. So even if you're earning a small amount, like let's say two or $300 from your site, that could be a nice little uh, income that you earn from selling your website via a broker like Motion Invest or Flippa or elsewhere. Now I realize some of those methods and strategies might not apply to you or to your types of writing. So consider self-publishing. Now I've self-published a couple of books over the years. I've self-published uh, The Power of Creativity to Become a Writer Today series and more recently my book I Can't Believe I'm a Dad. Self-publishing is great because you don't need to rely on any gatekeepers. If you have an idea for a book and you can see it through, you can call yourself an author. But self-publishing isn't easy. You still need to invest in your book and that means hiring a book editor, a book cover designer, and also potentially investing in advertising for your book. After interviewing dozens of non-fiction authors over the years, here's what I learned. Most non-fiction authors don't earn a full-time living from one book or even from several books. Instead, they treat their non-fiction books as like calling cards into their business, which work for some of the other strategies that I'm about to cover. That said, if you write fiction, you could easily earn a good living from self-publishing so by writing paranormal romance, for example, or thrillers or murder mysteries. And those genres tend to sell quite a bit more on Amazon. And if you have a series of books, that's even better. Because after interviewing a number of successful fiction authors, what I've discovered is they don't quit their job after book one. It's only after they've written seven or eight books and they're committed to writing and self-publishing and that they've improved their craft and built an audience of readers. It's only then that they start earning enough money to quit their job and do it full time. That brings me to this 10th strategy that you can try to get paid to write, which is to coach. Coaching is fantastic because if you've tried some of the other strategies that I've talked about, you've already picked up some skills about self-publishing, about writing, uh, potentially about affiliate marketing or blogging or whatever type of niche or niche you're in. Writing is mysterious to many people. Perhaps you could teach some of them, but rather than going and creating an expensive and time-consuming online course, perhaps there's one or two people on your email list that you could engage with and provide some sort of coaching service to. 
you could set up a package whereby you coach them for three or six months to write a book or to start a blog and you, and you could build them monthly or you could build them a small amount at the start and then a small amount at the end. Coaching is great because it gets you to figure out who your audience is. It gets you to figure out what your audience wants and it also helps you bring some money relatively quickly into the business without actually creating a service or a product up front. On the flip side, consult. So I, after interviewing a number of non-fiction authors, what I found is business non-fiction offers offer consultancy services, which is a bit like coaching, except you're adv offering advisory services to a business rather than an individual. And that can be a lot more lucrative because the business will potentially have a, you know, a bigger budget and also chances are you're more knowledgeable about the subject or it's a more profitable topic. So if you're writing in the business to business genre or you're writing for entrepreneurs, perhaps you can consider setting up some sort of consultancy and using your books as a lead magnet for your consultancy service. The 12th strategy that you can try is become a public speaker. I've interviewed a number of public speakers uh, over the years. Public speaking is an interesting gig for earning money because you can earn money from actually giving the talk but not only that some of the public speakers that I've talked to build it into their contract that they whoever's hiring them also has to buy a set amount of their books so they're getting paid for giving a big talk and they're also getting paid for selling copies of their books public speaking is also good according to the people that I've talked to because it can bring in a large amount of money uh, over the course of a couple of days and then you can take a few weeks or a few months off that said, they all said public speaking is quite difficult. Not that they have a fear of getting up on stage, but that you do need to spend a lot of time preparing for your big talk and you still need to go out and pitch and land your clients or your public speaking gigs. The 13th strategy that you can try is to create digital products. What do I mean by digital products? Well, many bloggers and non-fiction writers that I know create things like printables. They use services like Etsy to sell their printables. So these could be... Um, Printables for organizing your day, printables for setting goals, printables that you can use for uh, story writing or templates and other types of uh, <coughs> outlining and planning. Creating a digital product isn't just confined to creating principles though. The 14th strategy that you can try is to create a digital course. I've created a number of digital courses over the years covering topics like writer's block. Creating digital courses is more lucrative than writing and self-publishing your first book but there's a big caveat. You've got to invest nearly more time in promoting and selling your course than you do in actually creating it. No, that's not an excuse to create a cheap course, but it can be quite difficult to invest a lot of hours in a course and then find out nobody buys it. So it's usually a better idea to create a bare bones course and then sell it as a minimal viable product with the caveat that you're going to iterate and improve on it. And then if you start getting people who are buying your course, you can go back and improve the materials uh, and potentially increase the price. There you go. Those are 14 different ways you can get paid to write today. What I would say to you is to experiment with these strategies and see which one works best for your creative business. Once you start earning money from these strategies, and once you've paid yourself and always pay yourself first, consider investing some of these, this income back into your business. So let's return to self-publishing, for example. When I self-published my first book, I got a cheap cover and I tried to edit it myself. The cheap cover was okay, but editing a book myself wasn't. So as soon as I started, uh, it wasn't because it was typos and mistakes in the book. As soon as I started earning money from some of those other strategies, I hired a professional editor to fix the books and I commissioned a better book cover and my book sales went up. Similarly, when I started earning a small bit of money from affiliate marketing, I migrated to faster website hosting and my traffic went up because I also invested in taking courses in search engine optimization. So when you started earning money from getting paid to write, remember to pay yourself to invest back in your creative business or business and also to invest in your learning as a creative entrepreneur. My other key takeaway for you is this, don't become too dependent on one income stream. That's the mistake I made in my 20s when I was a struggling journalist. I was dependent on a few freelance writing gigs and when those freelance writing gigs dried up, I had nothing left at the end of the month and I found myself on social welfare. These days I've built multiple income streams for Become a Writer Today. The main ones are affiliate marketing, display advertising and to a lesser extent some books and courses. But I'm relatively confident that if one income stream dries up, I will be able to rely on the other one, at least until I'm hopefully able to fix things. So whatever your income stream is, ask yourself, how can you diversify? How can you protect yourself from the downside? Because 
whatever your source of income is, it will be cyclical, there will be dry spells. Hope you enjoyed this video about getting paid to write. If you do, hit the thumbs up. And if you wanna get more videos like this or about the craft of writing, please subscribe to the Become A Writer Today channel. And finally, if you did like this video, you might like this one next.